Aloha and welcome to our video on sedimentary rocks. In this video we will describe the major processes involved in forming sedimentary rocks. We will distinguish between clastic and chemical sedimentary rocks and then we'll identify the features that are unique to some sedimentary rocks. Now when we're talking about sedimentary rocks they go through several processes that form them. Um, the first is we're going to start with a rock. So if we just draw our arbitrary rock here the first force that's going to come down there is going to be what we call weathering. And weathering is going to be any process that's going to break this rock into smaller little pieces. Okay, and it can be one of two things. It can be either a physical weathering process, which would be like being broken, dropped, cracked, smashed, things of that nature, or a chemical weathering, which will break it down using chemicals. So like if you had acid coming down on a carbonate rock, that would dissolve it down and it would break it up that way as well. Once we have this weathering, then we talk about erosion. And erosion is going to be a little bit of this weathering we continue with, but it's also the removal of it. And our agents of erosion are going to be these guys here, this water, wind, ice, or gravity. So water, meaning if we put it in a stream and it was flowing through that way, that would move that rock and those little bits of sediment from one place to another. Wind, same thing if it's blowing through there. I'm sure you've been to the beach and felt the wind blow across the sand and you can feel the sand hitting you. That would be wind erosion. You could have ice being moved by a glacier or gravity just simply rolling down a hill. Now, from there we get to deposition. And deposition is quite simply it's depositing this sediment. So as the energy slows down, then these little pieces are going to fall out. Normally it's done by size. So the larger pieces will drop down first and then so on and so forth till you get to the tiny little ones. Once you have this collection of sediment here, then it goes through two different processes. The first is going to be compaction. And compaction is where we're going to apply pressure. And that pressure generally happens on several different fronts. And what it's going to do is take all these sediments and squeeze them together. Okay, and it kind of takes away the spaces in between and squishes them together and forms it a little bit more of a dense, hardly packed thing in there. And then finally we go through what we call cementation. And cementation is where we deposit other minerals in between here. And that's going to help glue these little bits of sediment together, so to speak. And what we end up with is a brand new rock. And that'll be a sedimentary rock. So to form a sedimentary rock, we start with an original rock here. We go through weathering and break it up. Erosion, we can move it from one place to another. Deposition is where we lay it down into these layers. They get compacted and squished together, and then we cement them together with dissolved minerals. And that's how we form sedimentary rocks. Now we have two basic types of formation, but we're going to talk about three of them here. The first is what we call clastic. And clastic is like the classic, what we expect of sedimentary rock. And that's when it's made up of weathered bits of rocks and minerals. So things like sandstone, where you have a rock that's been broken down and it kind of comes into these itty little pieces of sand. If those get compacted together and then cemented together, we form sandstone. So clastic is where it's made of little rocks and minerals. Now the second type is chemical. And chemical is where it's going to be dissolved minerals that are going to precipitate from a watery solution. So that's where the minerals are there and the water kind of leaves it. And as the water evaporates out, it leaves the minerals behind and we get those types of rocks that way. And then finally, the really weird one here is biochemical. And biochemical is where it's going to be made of shells and skeletal remains of organisms. And that's where it's a little different. Remember we said rocks are going to be primarily inorganic. Well, here we're starting to see some that are forming from organic materials, the leftover shells and skeletal remains. So let's take a look at the clastic sediments first, clastic sedimentary rocks. Remember, these are broken up rocks and things like that that have been pressed together. We organize them by their texture, and that texture is going to be the grain size. So if it's larger than 2 millimeters, it's coarse, and then you can see we have medium, fine, and very fine as well. Now the sediment that it comes from, for these guys here, it's going to come from gravel. So if it's over 2 millimeters in size, we call it gravel. If they're rounded fragments, we end up with conglomerate. And if they're kind of angular and sharp fragments, then we call it brescia. Okay, so large texture, this we're going to end up with conglomerate or brescia, depending upon the shape of the fragments of the gravel. Now we have this medium here, we call the sediment sand, and that's how we make sandstone. We can have fine, which is found in mud, and that's going to be siltstone. And then we can have this very fine down here is how we make our shale. Okay, so these are going to be broken up bits of rock. That's what forms the sediment. 
the size of the sediment is going to give us our texture okay? and then we have what we have here all right so that's our clastic sedimentary rocks okay next up are our chemical sedimentary rocks and our chemical sedimentary rocks we're going to look at composition what is it made of and that looking at texture is going to give us a clue and then that'll give us our names so if we start with this calcite this calcium carbonate we notice that if it's crystalline form we can have limestone but then take a look down here these are our biochemical ones and our biochemical ones come from living things and we can see that all of these are going to have shells inside of them so we can have coquina which is what we call it when we can see the shells and the shells fragments they're kind of loosely cemented together you can kind of break out the shells that way limestone it's going to have various size shell and shell fragments that's going to be bonded together with this calcite cement and then we can have chalk and chalk is going to have microscopic pieces of these shells and clay now if we look down at some of the other ones we can have our quartz here we can look at gypsum here we have our halite which is going to be our rock salt okay and then we can have down here we have altered plant fragments and primarily when we're talking about that is when we're talking about making our coals and we'll talk about that in the lesson a little bit more Okay, so that ends our video on sedimentary rocks. As always, good luck on the lessons and your quizzes, and we will see you in the next video.